Welcome to Reddit Aliens. What's the scariest thing you have ever seen? Posted one day ago. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Was driving home from a Halloween party one night when we saw something that looked like a large piece of plastic on the road, saw it move, and told my boyfriend to avoid it. It was a hit and run. Man lying unconscious, face down across several lanes of the highway. His head lay just over the boundary of one lane and his body diagonally over the other. We pulled over to the side of the road and had to redirect traffic around him since he was too hurt to try to move him. I visibly flinched several times as several cars came close to his head. The scariest part was when he regained consciousness. Luckily, a person with medical training had pulled over and helped us hold him still. His screams were terrifying. And I'll never forget, when he lifted his forearms, it looked like there was no bone at all. It just flopped. Got in a bad car accident, and when I got out from the flipped car, my friend was covered in blood and lifeless. He was the one driving, and the passenger behind him had misfired a gun. Turned out, he was shot in the head, and that is what caused the accident. By some miracle, he's still alive, and yes, the guy behind him is in prison. My mom was dealing with kidney issues for a long time, and one random day I was home watching TV and she yelled my name from upstairs. I was running upstairs and she said my name again, but softer this time, and that's the last thing I ever heard her say. When I got upstairs, she was leaned back in the chair, looking up into the air completely unresponsive. She passed away a little over five years ago, and her blank stare and the way she yelled my name has haunted me since then. Sorry. Not really seen, but heard. My downstairs neighbor was fighting with her boyfriend. He was shouting and she was crying. I heard a slap and a baby start crying. The woman started scream crying and the boyfriend just shouted louder. They were fighting in the room right underneath mine. And at one point I felt the wall shake. My heart was in my throat and I called the police. They arrested him. When I was a service manager for a John Deere implement dealer, a guy had gotten himself caught in a hay baler it pulled him in and it killed him. Unfortunately, said hay baler came into the shop and we had to deal with it. There were definitely some leftover remnants. I'll leave it at that. Saw my dad laying bloody face and grass in front of our apartment after hearing gunshots and went running outside to see what happened. Thought he got shot in the face and was dead. He had actually been pistol whipped and then his face stomped on. Still can't unsee it. I was in a car accident that involved a motorbike. Me and my mother and my sister went out at about 10 p.m. to get some fast food. As we pulled into the apartment gate, a bike going, what the cops said to have been at least 120 miles per hour, slammed into my mom's car, shearing the entire engine bay off, and the bike's rear wheel almost killed my mom, but missed her by centimeters, with all the electronics off the car, spinned around four times when it stopped, the only light was from the headlight of the car behind. Used my door was jammed and the car was on fire from the severed fuel lines. When we got out, the people who stopped couldn't find the biker, so started looking for him, then I found him. My god, it was horrible. His face was unrecognizable and many body parts were mangled and broken. I stood there frozen until someone I saw found him. They must have seen my face. The guy said, oh lord have mercy, I'm sorry you saw this son. I will never forget that sight. When we were younger, we had horses. My sister decided one day to tie the lead rein of our crazy horse around her waist while taking him out to the field. I warned her that if he got spooked, she'd break her back. Not 30 seconds later, he bolted. He ran circles around the paddock as her body flopped lifeless under all four of his hooves like a rag doll. Horrific. He then went to jump the barbed wire fence with her still attached, but thankfully the rope snapped. It's been 23 years, and when I think about it, I can still see it all, frame by frame. How's your sister? I was watching my grandparents' animals for a week. They live on a small farm, but all they have is chickens, ducks, turkeys, cats, and dogs. My grandma would tell me stories about George the Cowboy Ghost that died on the land, and everyone but me had an experience with George. One night, I was watching TV. The lamp turns off next to me on its own. I look at the lamp and think, huh, weird. Look back up and notice a figure in the kitchen that slowly walks off out of view and then I just hear something, a big pot fall to the floor. 
I instantly jump up and investigate, and nobody is in the house but me. I'd locked all the doors prior to this experience. That week I kept all the doors locked, my bedroom door locked, and slept with my shotgun next to me. I love my grandparents' house, but I will never stay alone there. Frick that. When I was in 6th grade, I was at a bus stop in the morning, and this one kid at our bus stop, he was in 5th grade, was being called over by his dad. His dad kept yelling louder and louder for him to come, because the bus was on its way. As soon as the kid ran across the street, the school bus turned the corner. It was a blind spot, and the bus driver slammed on her brakes as hard as she could. The kid jumped up and screamed, and the bus driver screamed as well, and she had this terrified look in her eyes. She didn't hit him, but she barely missed the kid. My mom was there, and she screamed too. I didn't scream, but I stared in shock. I thought I was about to see a kid get killed right in front of me. I was 13, and my dad had recently developed a really bad cough that just didn't stop. He coughed day and night for a couple weeks straight. One night, as I was trying to sleep, I heard him from his room. It was kitty corner to mine, and we both had the window open, crying from the throat pain and asking God to kill him, even if it was violent and bloody. He said he didn't want to live with this pain anymore, and he wanted to die. He's a state employee and had insanely good health insurance, so I don't know why he didn't go to the doctor. A week later, he was driving me home, and he said he had cancer. The rest of his battle with cancer was devastating and very painful for everyone. It started in his lungs and then eventually spread to his brain, which took about a year and some change. On his deathbed, everyone was there. My brothers and sisters had talked to him all before I arrived, and they said, Hey, Embershot89 is here. Say hi, Dad. Side note, my parents named me after a dog. I know. Anyway, so I show up and my dad starts bawling because he thinks he gets to see his dog and he looks at me and is like, Who's this? Where's my dog? I want my dog. TL. DR. I was the only person in the entire family, including the dog, that my father didn't remember as the brain cancer killed him. It was as if my entire history with him had been erased. My father died not knowing or remembering of my existence. He remembered. I worked as a mental health professional years ago. One of my patients was a 6 foot 7, 200 pound man. He had severe paranoid schizophrenia and believed demons lived in his stomach and would randomly believe other people were demons trying to attack him. I was downstairs by the cafeteria when I heard screaming. Here comes my patient running at full speed, screaming about demons coming to get him and throwing punches at everyone near him. Luckily, I had a male co-worker with me because my 5'2 self was not going to do shit to stop him. Eventually, we had to get all the male workers in the building to hold him down while we gave him an injection of his emergency med. His screams of terror were haunting. He was so scared. He left our facility soon after for punching a nurse in the face. I've had a few unplanned run-ins with dead bodies, unfortunately, but one stands out more than others. I'd snuck out of my house very late one night as a young teenager for a short walk through some nearby trees by a lake. I was in poor health as a kid, and was under constant supervision in the daytime even after my health improved. I really needed the alone time for my mental well-being. I smelled something odd, not nice but almost sweet, and walked towards it, up against the edge of the water and only revealed by the moonlight hitting the lake at just the right angle was a person lying face down. I immediately stopped thinking about the smell, and 100% of my focus was now on this. I ran over to see if it really was a person, or if my mind was playing tricks on me, and I didn't need to get too close to realize that it was. I approached cautiously, and tried shaking them to see if they were okay. I didn't get any kind of response from them. I screamed for help and for someone to call an ambulance and could see the lights in the nearby houses turning on. I tried to roll them over so they weren't face down in the mud. It was extremely difficult and I kept slipping because everything was so wet. Them, my hands, the mud. I remember vividly that I noticed that they were cold and that something just didn't feel right. Honestly, it hadn't even crossed my mind that they might be dead until I touched them and suddenly I was somehow certain that they were. I thought I'd attempt CPR. I was not in any way trained, I just didn't know what else to do with a dead body as a scared kid in the dark. I put my hands on their chest, and with just the slightest pressure, my hand slid under the skin as it came away from their body. The smell was awful. The body was not fresh. It was probably only 10 seconds, but it felt like forever. 
I was just sitting there, my hands inside another human being's skin, processing what was going on. Next thing I know, I'm lifted away from the body. I had no idea what was going on. I remember thinking I was dying for some reason, lol. I was being picked up from behind, under the armpits like you might a toddler. I didn't realize until a small crowd had gathered with lights and stuff in response to my shouting earlier. Thinking back, the person picking me up was probably only in his early 20s and was very freaked out too, but trying to keep it together for me, bless him. My mother swallowing a bottle of pills and downing it with vodka. It was my 21st birthday, and she did it in the middle of the living room with the words, I hope I haunt you. My dad refused to do anything, so I called the emergency services. I don't know what was more terrifying, my mother trying to kill herself in front of me, or my father's complete indifference. I don't much like birthdays or family gatherings anymore. I was at the store and got stuck in an aisle behind a young couple with a very young baby, maybe only a few weeks old. The man had the baby wrapped in a blanket and resting on his shoulder while the woman pushed their cart. At one point, she asked him to pick up something somewhat heavy from a low shelf. He bent down, picked up the object and put it in the cart, then kind of hupped the baby up against his shoulder again. Only the baby went a little too high, slipped out of the blanket, went over his shoulder and hit the ground. Dad screamed even before he turned around. Mom grabbed the baby and they both ran out of the store. I just stood there, stunned, looking at the floor where the baby hit. There was a little spot of blood. The baby never made a sound. I don't know what happened to it. It would have to be my mom having a severe seizure and having to pin her down so my dad could give her a suppository medicine to stop the seizure. It went on for some time. The hour or so before it happened, when it happened, and the drive to the hospital are very clear in my mind. In the hour or so before it happened, we knew something was wrong. On one hand, you hope nothing happens, but then you're also constantly prepared, asking questions, observing responses, rub her back to see if she acknowledges your presence, change the channel on the TV to see if she notices, etc. As the hour progressed, we could tell that she was becoming less responsive and her answers to questions were slower and making less sense. This would happen before a seizure. When you know a seizure is coming, it's a stressful waiting game. Then it hits and you're just holding on like hell and hoping the person doesn't severely hurt themselves or die. Wait for the meds to kick in, then drive to the hospital, hope like hell you get there fast enough. It was awful. The first time was the worst because you're never prepared as a kid to have to take care of your parent like that. Apart from the experience being awful, whatever was left of your parent being a superhero is gone. My mom had lost most of that already, but that day was the last little fiber of it. We had reversed roles, and now I was the caretaker. Unfortunately, that role didn't last long. I'm grateful I got to take care of her, though. 1. The terrible job the funeral home did on my mom. She died of a large brain tumor and doctors had to remove a piece of her skull because of the swelling. They never put the piece back on and the funeral home just combed her hair over the crater. My mom looked like a life-sized doll with some of the air squeezed out of her head. 2. Being 17 and having a paranormal experience while in the shower, saw a creepy apparition which I tried debunking in various ways but to no avail. 20 minutes later, got the worst and only bloody nose of my life complete with blood clot removal upon removing the toilet paper from my nose. My wife's first cousin was building a derby car to run in the demolition derby one year. He lived behind us, basically right behind our garage with only a small alley between us. I was working on our car one fall evening when he walked over and asked if I could help him put the engine in time. We walked back over and I got in, started the car several times while he was turning the distributor. After four or five goes at it, the engine finally takes off running, but I hear a clanking sound like you might hear if someone dropped a tool into the fan. I hear him say, okay, shut it off, and I get out. He's just standing there looking at the engine for a few moments, then steps back. That's when I see blood all over the fan and radiator, and he's holding one hand in the other and asks, how bad is it? He moves his hand, and I was in total shock. He had put his hand on the moving metal fan blades of, that were belt driven and he hadn't installed the fan shroud. It had cut off his thumb and first three fingers of his left hand. I ran and got a towel and called 911. Of course, 
But what freaked me out more than anything was as I was sitting with him waiting on the squad, the only thing he complained about was his eye burning. I say to him, okay Sherman, let me look at your eye. He raises his head and looks at me and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The force of the spinning fan had sent a very large piece of his thumb bone straight through his eyeball. I almost fainted. I was so scared for him sitting there for what felt like an hour, but they were there within 10 minutes. I didn't see it, but I heard it. When my cousin died of very unfortunate circumstances, he had two holes in his lungs that were accelerated by AIDS. His mom was destroyed. Obviously, this is what's to be expected. But to make matters worse, she and I were born and raised in a zealotlessly religious family, and he was gay. She always ostracized him for his homosexuality and blamed him further for it when he contracted HIV. At the time, those suffering from AIDS didn't have the same resources people of that community have now. It was a quick and terrifying decline. My aunt was too shocked to fully understand that her son was dying, and when it happened, everything hit her at once like a wrecking ball. I know that people have been through horrible things and that there are worse lives to be led, but as a child, and to this day, there is nothing scarier to me than the soul-tearing sobs of a woman who's outlived her child after wasting so much time in a well of misunderstanding and denunciation. I can hear them even as I write this, and holy shit, I never want to experience that for myself.